And this is just in. The United States has launched new strikes against the Iran-backed Houthi rebels in Yemen. Officials telling CNN that they targeted anti-ship ballistic missiles, the same kinds of weapons that Houthis have been using to attack merchant and commercial Navy ships uh, in the Red Sea for the past few months. This is the third round of U.S.-led strikes since Thursday night. CNN's Oren Lieberman is at the Pentagon and has been tracking all of this. So, Oren, what are you learning about this latest round of strikes? Alex, it's crucial to note that this is the first time we've seen the U.S. strike anti-ship ballistic missiles before they were launched. U.S. Central Command says the Houthis were preparing to launch these anti-ship ballistic missiles on international shipping lanes when they were struck destroying them. As you point out, this is the third time we have seen the U.S. strike uh, Yemen over the course of the past several days. Thursday night, D.C. time, Friday night, and then the news coming just a short time ago about this latest round of strikes. U.S. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan warning there could be more if the Houthis continue to launch against international shipping lanes. We did not say when we launched our attacks, they're going to end once and for all, the Houthis will be fully deterred. We anticipated the Houthis would continue to try to hold this critical artery at risk, and we continue to reserve the right to take further action, but this needs to be an all-hands-on-deck effort. Several hours after the U.S. strikes, the Houthis did, in fact, launch another anti-ship ballistic missile, striking a uh, Maltese flag bulk carrier, the Zagrafia. So they retain the ability uh, to carry out strikes. And it's also worth noting that within the course of the past day or two, they also, in what appears to be the first time, struck a U.S.-owned and operated bulk carrier. In both cases, it was minor damage. The ships were able to continue on their way. But first, Alex, you see the threat that continues to one of the world's most critical waterways. And second, I think you very easily see the possibility of further U.S. strikes there. And, and Oren, the U.S. Navy is now saying that weapons were seized that were heading to the Houthis in Yemen, Iranian weapons. What more do we know about that? Uh, Alex, we have seen the U.S. intercept uh, shipments of Iranian weapons to Yemen in the past, often on stateless dows or stateless small ships. And this is what we're seeing here once again that occurred on January 11th, according to the U.S. Central Command. What's unique here this time are the weapons that were seized. According to CENTCOM, they seized uh, components for anti-ship ballistic missiles, components for anti-ship cruise missiles. These are the types of weapons that the Houthis have used to try to target and to threaten international shipping lanes. So that in and of itself is significant. But there were two Navy SEALs that were part of this operation, as well as a number of other assets. But according to U.S. officials, those SEALs are currently missing, and there is an ongoing search now that has continued for five days. Uh, U.S. officials who have spoken with us previously have said this seizure occurred in eight-foot seas, which is incredibly difficult condition. One of the SEALs went into the water. The other SEAL, by his training, immediately went after uh, his, uh, his colleague, the first SEAL. And at this point, Alex, both remain missing. Yeah, falling into the water at night in rough seas uh, on Thursday. Orrin Lieberman at the Pentagon, thank you very much. Iran fired a barrage of missiles into northern Iraq on Monday. A Kurdish news outlet says missiles fired by the Iranian Revolutionary Guards destroyed the home of a Kurdish businessman under the pretext that it was used by Israeli spies. Officials say at least four people were killed in the city of Erbil. Iran also fired missiles at what it called terror groups in northern Syria, describing them as a security threat. Meantime, U.S. Central Command says the Navy, the U.S. Navy, seized Iranian-made missiles that were en route to Houthi militants in Yemen. It happened during a raid off the coast of Somalia just last week. During the operation, two Navy SEALs went overboard, and those Navy SEALs are still missing as I speak. We're also learning Houthi militants have claimed responsibility for striking a cargo ship owned by the United States in the Gulf of Aden on Monday. They vow any future strikes on Yemen will not go unanswered. They are vowing to retaliate. The Qatari prime minister spoke at the economic forum in Davos about these Houthi attacks. Take a listen. What we have right now in the region is a recipe of escalation everywhere. We shouldn't uh, uh, just focus on, on those uh, small conflicts. We, we should focus on the main conflict in Gaza. And as soon as it's diffused, I believe everything else will be uh, diffused. We got word that Iran launched several missile strikes in, in Kurdistan, in, in northern Iraq. Um, Iran is saying that they were attacking Israeli spy headquarters. The U.S. is calling these strikes um, irresponsible, completely imprecise, reckless. What more do we know so far? 
Well, absolutely. And there is mounting concern, not just in the region, but of course, broader and further afield around the potential for the war that we are seeing unfolding in Gaza to escalate, to spill over into the region, and particularly when it comes to Iran and, crucially, groups backed by Iran. Now, last night's attack has certainly uh, raised concern, according to uh, media and the uh, semi-autonomous uh, region of northern Iraq. At least 10 ballistic missiles were fired by Iran across uh, the area surrounding the capital, Erbila, which at least five of which are reported to have targeted the residence of a Kurdish businessman. Now, we have, of course, heard from the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, which has claimed to have carried out uh, this missile attack, acknowledging this in the early hours of Tuesday morning. As you mentioned, Zayn, they say that they were targeting what they've described and characterized as the main espionage headquarters for Israel's intelligence agency, uh, Mossad. We have received a statement, of course, from uh, Iran's foreign ministry earlier today, saying that these attacks were, in their words, precise and targeted, that they were focused on targeting what they've described as uh, Irani Israeli intelligence forces charged with killing Iranian commanders or carrying out attacks against Iranian assets. And of course, we have uh, reached out to the Israeli authorities for comment on this. We have also, of course, uh, in that same moment, seen attacks carried out by Iran targeting uh, locations in Syria as well. Now, on that front, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps says that they were uh, targeting anti-Iran terror organizations, namely in response to those twin blasts we saw earlier this month in the Iranian city of Kerman, which, of course, uh, killed dozens of people who had been paying their respects for slain Iranian commander Qasem Soleimani at his burial site on the fourth anniversary uh, of his death. He was, of course, killed uh, in a strike on Baghdad International Airport, ordered at the time by then uh, U.S. President Donald Trump. So there has been uh, concern for some time now around the potential reaction and response we may see from Iran at the time, of course, of those twin blasts uh, that were shortly killed claimed by ISIS. Uh, of course, though, when we have been hearing the messaging from Iran over the last few days and weeks, that has uh, certainly raised alarm bells around the potential for further responses more broadly in the region. And, of course, Iran-backed groups as well. You had Natasha mentioning, uh, talking about the situation in Yemen, the Iran-backed Houthis, but also crucially here in Lebanon as well, where we continue to see crossfire on the southern border between Iran-backed Hezbollah uh, and Israeli forces along the border.